Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being in this session uh, where we are going to be talking about uh, smart destinations and its impacts. Um, in this session, we have four uh, leading speakers which are going to be talking about two different aspects of uh, the issue of smart destinations. On the one hand, some people are going to be talking more about the strategic aspects, and on the other hand, we will see some specific examples of implementation. I think that on any uh, smart destination um, project, it's really, really important, the measurement. So what is the impact will be had to be measured. So without any further ado, um, I will just kind of remind you that you can actually use the APP, the uh, application that you all have in this Congress, which is Ask and Vote. Please use it, join the conversation, and uh, be asking questions to the speakers, and at the end, we'll kind of have a, a round of Q&A for all the audience. Some of the presentations will be in Spanish, but you all have um, uh, translations uh, available, so um, you can actually follow it. So the first speaker, uh, let me introduce you, will be um, Don Carlo Romero. Carlo Romero is uh, the director of research in Segitur. He is uh, actually um, trained as economist, and uh, he's going to be talking about what uh, the initiative of smart destinations that he, you know, it's been actually been implemented by Segitur is all about. So please take the floor, Carlos. Okay. Okay, good, good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure being here in Barcelona with all of you. Um, I will try to share with you uh, in, in just a uh, 10 minutes what we're doing in, in, in Segi Tour. We are a public company. We are part of the Ministry of uh, uh, Energy, uh, Tourism and Digital Agenda of Spain. Uh, and we have implemented a program to promote uh, smart tourism destinations in Spain. And we have also some um, specific experiences in, in, in Mexico of implementing uh, the model that we have developed. So we are. I'm going to try to explain to you this, this, this model. No? Uh, we um, consider that we are under an environment of uh, increasing complexity, volatility, ambiguity, uncertainty uh, in a sector in which um, uh, we have suffered great cha uh, uh, changes in, in, in from the perspective of the technology involved in the commercialization uh, phase, in the uh, um, activities, destination activities, uh, 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 made uh, by the tourist in the intensive use of, uh, of uh, mobile apps uh, when the travelers are arriving to a destination. Uh, uh, many different actors that have arisen in this sector uh, are coming, arriving from the digital economy, uh, uh, new players, uh, increasing competition, uh, a completely new scenario in which um, destination managers, managers have to uh, uh, take their decision on the basis of uh, uh, new inputs and new insights, and we are trying to help the destinations to uh, uh, make better decisions and make better planifications of their uh, tourism strategies through this uh, methodology. Um, we've been working in, in the last uh, 10 years with destinations in different phases uh, in the area of, of um, um, helping the destinations to create uh, tourism infrastructures, uh, products, uh, services, uh, in, 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 in a strategic planning, trying to consolidate some destinations. Uh, also, uh, we've been working with mature destinations all over Spain in, in areas such as uh, sustainability, quality. And since um, a couple of years ago, we started to work with destinations under this new uh, concept, uh, which could be uh, also seen as a new claim, as, in, as, in, as a new uh, brand concept to uh, organize the different ways uh, you could help the destinations to manage properly the kind of decisions and the, the kind of actions they have to, to take within those destinations toward uh, their, their visitors. No? We have defined our own concept of smart destination um, in, in Spain from the point of view of the, uh, of the, of the ministry. Um, and, and part of the destination of the, of the definition involve uh, uh, technological aspects, but uh, most of it um, has to do with, with concepts such as uh, sustainability, such as uh, accessibility, such as uh, innovation. So from our point of view, an innovative tourism destination um, uh, consolidated on a cutting edge technological infrastructure, this is uh, basically uh, a, a transversal uh, technological infra infrastructure that you need, and you're going to need it uh, anyway, 
uh, which means uh, IoT, which means uh, uh, wireless access uh, to the infrastructure, which means uh, 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 communication and telecommunication networks, uh, which is something transversal, but at the same time, you are building all this infrastructure to um, uh, improve uh, and, and, to, and to boost uh, the interaction between the residents of the destination and the visitors, um, also to take into consideration uh, sustainability issues, uh, also to uh, guarantee and facilitate the accessibility to the destination, uh, also to increase the, the experience of the visitors arriving to the destination, also to, uh, to promote uh, uh, local services uh, uh, provided by uh, local providers of tourism services, um, and at the end of the day, to improve the quality of the experience of the visitors arriving to the destination and to improve also the quality of life of the residents. So uh, uh, technology is part of the concept, is part of the methodology, but it, it is not probably the most important thing. Um, the basic objectives that we try to um, help the destinations to achieve under this methodology have to do with increasing the tourist integration and interaction with the locals and with the residents, and, and this is critical. Um, how do we manage this relationship among uh, visitors and, and, and residents? Um, helping the destination and their businesses and their stakeholders and their local communities to uh, increase their competitiveness and their profitability. And, and, and a third objective would be to improve the quality of, ri of life of the resident uh, population. We've been working under different schemes, different agenda, different national plans, uh, under the framework of the national tourism strategy, under the framework of the uh, uh, national uh, digital agenda, and the uh, smart cities uh, strategy, and, 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 uh, uh, and the destination uh, uh, smart destination strategy, and under the digital agenda for Spain. No? Uh, we've been working also very intensely in the area of uh, standards, and, and we have been working with, with INOR, the, the standardization agency in Spain, uh, uh, working in, in the area of smart destinations and, and indicators, and we will, we've been working very closely with the Secretary of State for um, uh, Digital Agenda uh, 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 in the area of standardization, which is also a good way to help the destination to, uh, to, to, to improve their, their proceedings. Um, we have been elaborating a, a methodology using different references of, of uh, methodologies already existing uh, at the European level, at the OECD, at the um, uh, World Tourism Organization. They have developed their own uh, specific methodologies on the areas of uh, tourism impacts, on the areas of uh, technology, on the areas of sustainability. So somehow we try to uh, put them in, 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 in a, in, in in a, in a, a coherent uh, model, which is the one we are, we are um, uh, using. Uh, somehow, and we have the recognition of the um, United Nations uh, uh, World Tourism Organization, uh, smart destinations, uh, uh, our model, the model we have developed in Spain, has been recognized as a, as a, as a key element to promote uh, the sustainable development of the, of the destinations. Uh, uh, and I have some... some, some uh, quotes uh, from, from this organization. This is the, the standard, uh, the two standards that we have been working on, uh, the, uh, the standard uh, on, on the management system for smart destinations, uh, what we call the requirements. What do you require to implement uh, 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 this, this kind of management system is going to help you, you municipality, you DMO, destination management organization, to manage properly your destination. Uh, and another uh, standard that we have developed uh, on the basis of uh, indicators and, and tools, technological tools, to help you to implement those uh, uh, proceedings. So, um, well, some of the of the of the things that we've been doing, um, we have put in place uh, some somehow a kind of uh, uh, a smart destination management system uh, based on, on uh, compiling and, and gathering information and documents uh, at the bottom line, um, elaborating proceedings and procedures based on, 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 on this information, and elaborating policies and, and, and developing uh, uh, public services. Um, we have uh, developed a standard on indicators around uh, uh, areas such as uh, feasibility, reliability, and, and relevance of those indicators. 
um, and uh, we have been working in those in those areas. No? So our smart destination uh, methodological model is based on, on 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 four axes: innovation, technology, sustainability, and accessibility. Under the umbrella of governance, which is the the uh, uh, broad objective of the of the methodology, always taking into account this interaction between uh, public and, 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 and private uh, stakeholders uh, uh, along the destination. It is a kind of a, uh, a continuous improvement uh, uh, process. It is an, a never ending story, you know? So you start working with us on our methodology and during three years, you are involved in the process of uh, uh, continuous in improvement in the, in the, in the different uh, proceedings uh, you are involved. Uh, we are dealing with issues related with uh, infrastructure, technological infrastructure, uh, regulation, security, promotion, transport, hospitality, gastronomy, other resources. And the focus, of course, are always the visitors and the needs of the visitors and the interaction of those visitors with the residents and the locals. Um, we've been working in several destinations in issues such as uh, renewable energy, uh, ambient light measuring sensors, and in, in issues such as uh, recycling. Uh, the whole concept of uh, circular economy is part of our methodology. Uh, of course, there's a the specific area within the methodolo methodology working on, 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 on flow management of, of, of uh, tourists and visitors and, and, and people over the destination and, 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 and vehicles. Um, uh, also, we've been working in the area of uh, video guides, geolocalized uh, tourism, touristic routes, uh, um, uh, big data. We have developed our own platform of uh, big data to help the destinations to manage uh, increasing the amounts of uh, information from different uh, 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 suppliers. We've been working with them in a concept that we call the tourism office of, of the 21st uh, century. Uh, and I'm finishing, and here, um, very quickly, some of the destinations with with whom we've been working in the last a couple of years around Spain. Uh, so over 15 destinations that are part of this project that have implemented our methodology and are working with us. Um, uh, and outside Spain, we've been working with Argentina and we're working with the, with the, uh, the city of Buenos Aires, uh, implementing them uh, 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 um, a big data platform, an intelligence uh, platform to understand uh, uh, the, uh, the, the tourism uh, uh, insights of the of the Buenos Aires destination and also in, in Mexico, uh, Palma and Mallorca uh, doing different things. Uh, well, in Tequila, very interesting this this example of working with a small destination in the state of Jalisco in Mexico, um, uh, trying to helping them to uh, to to implement uh, our methodology. Uh, so the two experiences that we have put in place, exporting our methodology, our model of smart destination, have been taken in Mexico in, in Tequila and the Cozumel Island and in, in, in uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina, no? Uh, well, and, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you, Carlos. Please allow me to introduce you to um, Don Jesus Cañadas Fernández. He is actually also a member of the Ministry of uh, Energy, Tourism and Digital Agenda, same as Carlos, but in a different uh, area. He is head of unit of the Directorate of Promotion of the Information Society. And he's going to be talking also about um, uh, smart destinations, but perhaps from the context of um, uh, implementation and standardization. Um, so please, Jesus, tell us about it. Thank you. Okay, in primer lugar, buenas tardes. Eh, felicitaros por el interés que estáis mostrando en, en, la, en, la, en las conferencias que estamos dando. Yo voy a darla en español, en Spanish, porque creo, aunque la, aunque la exposición está en inglés, pero creo que se podría entender mejor lo que estamos haciendo. Estoy seguro que los traductores sabrán eh, eh, reproducir perfectamente mis frases, teniendo en cuenta además que la exposición está en inglés. Bien, eh, hemos oído muchas palabras, si alguien se acerca por la feria verá que hay muchas plataformas de Smart Cities y aquí hemos oído la palabra eh, concretamente inteligencia, calidad de vida, manejo de... En fin, son palabras que de alguna manera vamos a entrar a entroncarlas directamente con el Smart Destination. La, la inteligencia, la calidad de vida que estamos buscando y tratamos de buscar esto una solución. La solución que vamos a dar aquí es una solución que estamos llevando a nivel mundial. ¿eh? Veréis un poco cómo funciona. Se basa en esa plataforma que hemos dicho inicialmente. Bueno, empezamos primero ¿eh? 
eh, concretamente, la actual situación es que hay un bloqueo, un caos en plataformas, hay un problema gordísimo de semántica, nadie utiliza la misma, la, la misma terminología, los verticales, los sistemas verticales que hay, sean de basuras o de lo que sea, no eh, eh, se le llama esto horizontalidad, no se comunican unos con otros y hay necesidades de servicios de estandarización, necesidades de estandarización. Eh, concretamente, pretendemos evolucionar, en línea con mi compañero, a, a interfaces abiertos y normalizados con reglas semánticas y la estandarización conforme los cuerpos oficiales ISO, ETSI, TM Forum, que están aquí presentes en est muchos en esta en esta en este Smart City de aquí de, de, de aquí de Hospitalet, en esta fila de Barcelona. Bien, eh, me gustaría que esto tuviese tomas y referencia de esta figura. Todas las plataformas funcionan así, tienen una capa de adquisición en la parte de abajo, cogen toda la información, tienen una capa de conocimiento, una capa de interoperabilidad y una capa de servicios. Todas funcionan así. Fijaros qué coge esto, información de las redes sociales. No sabéis la cantidad de información que proporcionan las redes sociales en inteligencia turística, concretamente con un elemento muy clave, que es información obtenida en destino. Es increíble, yo me he quedado sorprendido de la información que arrojan. Información de los sensores, información de todas las cosas que tiene una ciudad. Hay mucha información. Veremos cuál de ellas es útil. Información de sensores de las farolas tal o del consumo, por ejemplo, de los hoteles. Consumo de agua de hoteles. Arroja mucha información eso. Bien, eh, lo que pretendemos con esa plataforma es que la información se abra a terceros. ¿Para qué? Para poder... La, la, la plataforma de ciudad sea capaz de trabajar con elementos estor, externos, concretamente inteligencia turística. Y este es el esquema que estamos planteando. De alguna manera, esa plataforma que hemos visto antes, ese esquema, lo ponemos como unos servicios, esto es norma internacional, la, la van a probar ahora a nivel internacional, la UIT o ITU Y4200. ¿Eh? Eh, concretamente proporciona en la capa superior servicios, puede ser servicios turísticos o cualquier otro servicio, las capas de medio son servicios de tipo de la, las funciones de servicio, las funciones de interfaz, las funciones de datos y la parte de abajo la sensórica y la adquisición. Lo importante es que abrimos y obligamos a abrir bajo interfaces normalizados a terceras partes. ¿Eh? Esto va a dar un potencial muy grande teniendo en cuenta, bueno, esto es como se podría obtener de una plataforma normal, esto nos permite muchísimas comunicaciones, por ejemplo, una ciudad con su puerto ¿eh? o otros modelos de negocio. Voy a pararme en este, que es el más importante. Fijaros una cosa, dos ciudades, conforme al esquema anterior, las ciudades tienen la sensórica propia de las ciudades, toda la información, pero fuera creamos una plataforma externa externa que sea capaz de controlar esas ciudades. ¿Controlar a qué me refiero la palabra controlar? Me refiero a controlar desde el punto de vista inteligencia turística. Es decir, la ciudad tiene concretamente los recursos del Smart Destination. Dentro de la ciudad tiene el Smart Destination y ahí tiene unos recursos. Recursos además con sus atributos, es decir, recursos pueden ser desde una ruta, los museos, las playas, eh, los atributos pueden ser pues lo que queramos, tiene un parking, tiene restaurantes, tiene lo que sea y todo esto es posible controlarlo directamente. Y para eso con el mejor, móvil, con el mejor elemento sensor de todos, que es el móvil. Bien, ¿qué tenemos en, la, en este caso en la derecha, en el Smart Destination, el control de Smart Destination? Eso está asociado concretamente a perfiles de usuario, que lógicamente no los tiene la ciudad. Perfiles de usuario e información de la mayoría de lo que llamamos partes interesadas o stakeholders, que son los que realmente los turoperadores, toda la información de todos estos elementos que normalmente no tienen que relación con la ciudad, tienen relación con, concretamente con la, con, con, con la parte asociada al turismo. ¿Y qué pretendemos con todo esto? Si tenemos localizados los recursos de la ciudad y en la derecha tenemos localizados los perfiles de los usuarios, todo el sistema informático obteniendo información de todas las fuentes posibles, desde el Smart, desde concretamente, desde las redes sociales. Eh, ya digo, las redes sociales, eh, recientemente en, estuve en un sitio donde con la plataforma Twenty, 
¿eh? Eh, resulta que se tomaba información asociada al destino. Empezaban a cruzar información y se sabía de qué hablaba la gente, lógicamente anonimizado, el interés que tenían por las cosas, los comentarios que hacían. Y con esto nos permitimos, digamos, se permite a la plataforma tener una información de lo que está ocurriendo en ese momento. Lo completaría con una información previa el antes y con una información posterior el después. Con esto la inteligencia turística sería capaz de preparar ofertas turísticas y de definir adecuadamente cómo compartir los recursos y cómo establecerlos para que funcionen de la forma más optimista. Eh, esto, bueno, esto es otra cosa que se aplica concretamente a sistemas rurales, no voy a entrar en detalle. Esto indica concretamente el traspase de vasos de datos para marcar precisamente las partes interesadas, es decir, el turista, eh, los elementos, los, eh, todos los elementos que intervienen, los DMOs, eh, los turnoperatos, todo esto se combina y vamos combinando para, para hacer, digamos, las ofertas de inteligencia turística a las ciudades o a las partes interesadas. Eh, esto sería un ejemplo de cómo esa inteligencia turística, perdonen que entremos en detalles técnicos y no quería profundizar, eh, 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 da esa información y hace ofertas de interés precisamente a las ciudades, a través de esas plataformas que hemos hablado y si le falta plataforma lo diría de una forma en forma de informes. Eh, eh, concretamente, un modelo que lo he puesto aquí para que nos hagamos idea, los parkings, todo aquí tendría que ser normalizado, el parking tendría que estar localizado, estos son los modelos semánticos que se están llevando, los data models tendrían lógicamente que ser incorporados, no cuesta nada incorporarlos, la ciudad ya se encargaría de, en la medida que se llene el parking, que, que entra un coche, ya se encargaría de ir actualizando periódicamente y esto lo tendría lógicamente controlado a la plataforma. Bien, eh, esto también es otro modelo del, 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 del de los, de los modelos de datos y simplemente una conclusión. ¿eh? Si, la plataforma se, eh, si, la, eh, la, si la plataforma se transforma en una plataforma abierta y estandarizada, acorde a la regulación que hemos definido en la UIT, que es esa que se acaba de aprobar ahora, con los data models, los modelos de datos, acuerdo, a, a, de acuerdo con las reglas semánticas, buenos planes de inteligencia turística podrían ser hechos y obtendríamos todos un beneficio económico sin precedentes. Voy a señalar que este interés está teniendo internacional, ya están muchos países muy interesados en este modelo, se basa en la asistencia de una plataforma de ciudad, pero la parte de inteligencia turística externa puede ser perfectamente complementada. Creemos que es muy interesante este modelo y esperamos de ello un crecimiento económico y una distribución justa del turismo de una forma que crea que es beneficiosa para todos. Muchas gracias por vuestra atención. Thank you, thank you, Jesús. You are actually just on time. Um, um, next speaker is uh, Mariano Lamarca. Mariano Lamarca is, uh, is a telecommunications engineer and he works for um, Barcelona City Council. Um, he is also going to be talking about um, how. Uh, they are developing pilot uh, initiatives and specifically he's going to mention some examples applied to Barcelona, to the city of Barcelona. So please take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, in, in fact, uh, me, my presentation is focused uh, to explain how apply services in, in, a, in a city, not thinking only in terms of a smart destination, because uh, in fact we have to uh, evolve the cities in several aspects, okay? In fact, uh, Barcelona has a wide uh, point of view of how uh, deploy uh, smart services. Uh, thinking in citizens, in circular economy, and in, in the environment. Okay, ¿cómo avanza esto? Okay. Uh, Barcelona uh, has a strong uh, work with the European Union uh, in terms uh, using the H2020 program today uh, in order to deploy services uh, uh, using uh, the procedures of uh, innovation uh, public procurement. The idea is uh, to create a scenario where public-private partnership has a main role with a quadruplex collaboration program where public sector, universities, research centers, enterprises, and citizens has a specific role and interact. That is the reason 
what uh, the services needs a multidisciplinary, a multi point of view. Uh, you can't only think in a smart destination when you perform a service in a city. This is the anatomy model uh, where uh, this anatomy model is the, defined in Barcelona some years ago in order to standardize the services of a city. Today, this city, city anatomy is standardized by ISO. In fact, Barcelona evolves to a model named macroblock uh, model. This macroblock consists basically in divide the city in a small village. And these small villages are rounded by high, dis uh, high mobility streets. And inside the macroblocks, people go on foot and on bicycle. As a consequence, all services deployed here uh, needs to be thinked with this uh, scenario for people and for people foreigner. The services performed here has a structure like this. Uh, in fact, each service, each service has a, an application uh, probably different in each city uh, because you have a different organization, a different culture, a different political people, etc. That means the final application of this is different between cities. But if you divide the services, the final services in their components, you can see uh, basic services probably common in all the cities of the world. And that permits standardized, standardized services. OK, this, uh, we have defined approximately 900 services, basic services for macro blocks. And we start to deploy services. And we have a big problem of information system. That includes smart destination services. Hmm? Uh, or uh, CPDs or uh, data centers evolves the number of vertical applications uh, from uh, 20 to 1,000 vertical applications in 10 years. Today, we start to change this situation. The situation is evolve the information system architecture from a vertical scenario to a, a scenario where you have a, a conceptual data warehouse where all the information of sensor actuators goes to uh, machine to machine, Internet of Things, to this uh, conceptual data warehouse. And services, uh, human to machine, interact with this data warehouse. That permits all the services uh, can uh, uh, use all the information of all the elements of the city. Uh, that is very important to perform new services with new uh, capabilities. This uh, model is the, is, uh, the basis uh, is standardized in International Telecommunication Union, referred by Jesus Cañadas. Okay, Barcelona City Council needs to participate in standardization bodies in order to put their experience to standardization bodies, and as a consequence, all services probably accomplish most of these standards. Okay, the tool for deploy services is the Urban Lamp tool. Basically, we uh, receive enterprises, research centers, universities around the world, and startups. When an, an enterprise or a startup or a, or a research center needs to test in Barcelona, we make a an study and assign a project manager. And this project manager is a, uh, make a gift to this enterprise or research center in order to perform the service in the city with the citizens. And the results of this test is uh, high information for the city in order to create uh, new RFP uh, processes. That is the public, uh, the concept of innovation public procurement of the European Union, with a difference or results goes to standardization bodies. And 
goes to some examples curious for Air Mars destination. For example, we uh, perform public uh, open government and we perform offices to uh, make uh, different uh, actions with the city uh, by offi offices in the street and by mobile phones. And as a consequence of this, we decide make the same solution for a smart destination and made uh, a virtual office and a smart casino. You can see an element like this in the enter of fire. And uh, uh, it's curious this uh, element was designed for tourists. And the reality of this element is there are more people of the city use these elements because they, there are more people in the city has the problem of digital divide. And digital divide is not, uh, not to have uh, a smartphone. Digital divide, m more things, is don't understand the applications. And in this case, uh, this element is thinking for, uh, uh, for tourists, thinking in uh, tourists understand the concepts. And the result is the citizen needs that for understand the results. And uh, this result, uh, we have the possibility to contrast this with Singapore, and Singapore has the same uh, situation and the same result. Probably we have to change our concept to how deploy smart services, because smart service could be integrated in the city. Another example is uh, monitoring civil works. We have a service with, uh, where we monitor civil works and give information to citizens in order how what street is, uh, has problems, etc. And we are surprised when, when several tourists ask us, uh, because you don't put here information about city. Because we use, uh, use uh, beacons, for example, uh, for uh, show information about a specific uh, civil work. Uh, and with this experience, I, uh, we just, uh, implement other uh, devices, uh, as example, for count people in order to uh, uh, evaluate the resources of the city uh, and in different situations. And when we implement this technology, we discover it, this technology sends us different information, additional information, permit us not only count, we can know the nationality of the people uh, or other characteristics important, not only for smart destination, but for other services too. And uh, finally, the use of records in all these devices for uh, several purposes. For example, in uh, waste management is for uh, optimize the routes of uh, waste vans. In traffic lights, for uh, uh, permit the cross of blind people. And in the uh, uh, announcers of the streets or in uh, several points with plants. All these beacons today has a specific vertical service, and our plan is to put additional information for citizens and for tourists. For example, in this point, you have closed a shop like. And the, our challenge, we think in telemedicine, for example, there are more people with devices for telemedicine. In infrastructures, we have uh, an experience to put a uh, Wi-Fi system in uh, a petroleum platform and provide connectivity to people who works in the, in the sea. And uh, as a consequence, people uh, cross with a boat, a cruiser, for example, could connect Wi-Fi in the middle of the sea. Okay. As a consequence, you can provide information people go to your city before arrives you to, to your city. In smart parks, for example, we uh, have the information of how the uh, weather of the city change. This information could go to other applications. 
you have here several examples where you have an initial idea and this initial idea changed. When you think in your city, not only can have to change to, to think in terms of a specific way, is the case of a smart destination. You need to uh, await uh, point of view of all your services and the needs of citizens and the visitors. And this is all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariano. Our fourth uh, speaker is uh, Don Jose Luis uh, Colón Martinez. He is a representative from the island of Mallorca. And um, he's uh, somebody who has been working in uh, um, city management and uh, in the administration, in the public service for a long time, and has a wide experience in, in um, city and territory management. He's going to be talking to us about uh, a new initiative that they are about to launch called uh, Smart Islands and uh, Islas Inteligentes. And he's going to be talking to us in Spanish. So if you don't understand Spanish, please use the, the translation. Thank you. Sí, buenas tardes. Uh, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias también a FIRA Barcelona para tener la oportunidad de poder explicar aquí el proyecto de, del Smart, de Smart Island Mallorca y en su vertical del turismo. Uh, nosotros como Consejo de Mallorca uh, le vamos a explicar lo que es uh, o lo que ha sido uh, o lo que está siendo la, el trabajo que se está realizando con el proyecto Smart Mallorca. Es un proyecto que se presentó, nos presentamos como Consejo de Mallorca en en agosto del 2015 y un año después aproximadamente pues se nos dio la posibilidad de poder hacer una subvención de casi 9 millones de euros para ir trabajando con un proyecto muy amplio en el ámbito de competencia de lo que es el Consejo de Mallorca y en su ámbito de competencia muy transversal con muchas verticales diferentes de las cuales hoy iríamos a, a entrar más en detalle lo que es la parte de turismo. Uh, bueno, uh, como, como objetivo... Como objetivo estratégico destacamos la mejora de la calidad de vida de los ciudadanos y ciudadanas de la isla, la dinamización del turismo y ampliar su impacto en la economía mallorquina. Pueden ver los diferentes factores que estamos planteando a nivel de, de proyecto. En, en las diferentes verticales que se presentan en el proyecto Esmar Mallorca nos encontramos bueno, con, con el concepto de la ciudadanía, de la mejora de la calidad, el turismo como una vertical muy importante y con el concepto de intentar desestacionalizar el turismo y llegar a una mayor competencia turística en, en, el, en la isla de Mallorca, el concepto de energía, eh, la iniciativa para mejorar y la gestión y su eficiencia, y en el concepto también de, de gobierno abierto y de transparencia, como ha sido uno de los ejemplos que, que ha presentado la ciudad de Barcelona también. ¿no? Eh, vemos que, que hay muchas similitudes en, en las ideas proyectadas y que hay muchos conceptos trabajados también. Uh, como ya hemos dicho, el proyecto es un proyecto muy transversal, muy amplio, que abarca diferentes verticales y que hoy vamos a concretar la vertical de turismo, pero partiendo como un concepto de, de Smart Island Mallorca y de una plataforma uh, muy potente, muy transversal, que pueda uh, integrar todo lo que son las diferentes verticales y que asimismo sea interoperable con todos los servicios y con todas las iniciativas que se están trabajando a nivel Smart de la isla de Mallorca y que se, estiguen, que se estén trabajando también en diferentes municipios y con el gobierno de las Illes Baleares. Bueno, eh, estamos hablando de, de una plataforma eh, de turismo, una plataforma centralizada, una plataforma online, eh, que sea multicanal y que permita ofrecer a residentes y turistas contenidos e interés personalizado, según su perfil y, se, y a través de diferentes canales. Aquí hemos eh, puesto de relieve eh, en el proyecto que vamos a presentar uno, una serie de canales temáticos que creemos que pueden tener validez para dar continuidad al proyecto. Entre ellos, un centro de interpretación de la Sierra de Tramontana, conceptos de senderismo y cicloturismo, comercialización de instalaciones deportivas municipales, una central de reserva de refugios y también otro concepto que es una de las competencias que está trabajando el Consejo, 
que es el control de cinegético y de caza. Bueno, uh, ya entrando en lo que serían las líneas de actuación dentro de la desestacionalización y dinamización del turismo, uh, creemos muy importante el concepto de la consultoría tecnológica del turismo y también los análisis de flujos turísticos en estas zonas. Recopilar y analizar información de las características de Mallorca como de destino turístico cultural y la estimación de su demanda. El estudio descriptivo de patrimonio, rutas culturales a nivel local la planificación y diseño de estrategias y eh, la implementación de, de herramientas para el seguimiento de, de indicadores de éxito, el impacto y la calidad. También a nivel de análisis de flujos turísticos, pues disponer de datos detallados de estos flujos turísticos en Mallorca y dentro de Mallorca, basados en datos de redes móviles reales, dinámicos y recientes, frente a los modelos tradicionales, que son modelos estáticos que tenemos convencionalmente. Otra de las propuestas que planteamos también en el proyecto son paneles interactivos digitales y en, estos, en este proyecto de panel interactivo digital decir que en su primera uh, aproximación y en, en el inicio del proyecto estábamos hablando que uh, había uh, unos 33 municipios que se habían adherido a la propuesta pero ahora ya estamos de, hablando de 50, 51 municipios de la isla que estarían interesados en ubicar puntos estratégicos de buena visibilidad que actualmente no disponen de oficina turística como tal y que a través de estos paneles informativos se proveerá de información turística y se ofrecerá a los usuarios descargarse la app de turismo. También eh, en convenio con el Gobierno de las Islas Baleares eh, se está trabajando un, la mejora de, con el consorcio de transporte de las Islas Baleares que lleva todo, toda la línea de transporte interurbanos de la isla de Mallorca, un concepto de parada smart inteligente que en el primer, la primera fase del proyecto sería implementar unas 180 paradas uh, en, el, en el territorio de la isla de Mallorca y en estas 180 paradas también, aparte de la información del transporte, quiere ser uh, un punto de información de la plataforma turística, de los avisos de noticias, de poder interconectar todo lo que es la información de los municipios y toda lo que es la información de la isla de Mallorca. También se trabaja el concepto de oficinas de turismo, con, con oficina de información turística y cultural, con promociones, con actos, como ferias y mercados. Y otra parte importante que se quiere puntualizar en el proyecto es la protección del patrimonio, teniendo un poco... En idea, esta protección del patrimonio, los diferentes uh, edificios uh, declarados de interés cultural y que se pueden trabajar con sensorización de humedad, con sensorización de visitantes, con sensorización para tener su control medioambiental y estructural del, del edificio. También comentar aquí bueno, que se va a trabajar con, con una propuesta cultural en yacimientos arqueológicos y en los faros de la isla de Mallorca. Bueno, y en el concepto más amplio de lo que sería el turismo, pero también ligado a la movilidad y resiliencia, que también iría uh, conjuntamente a nivel transversal con el, con el proyecto y información válida para los residentes, uh, sería uh, combinar la información entre el turista y el residente, el residente y el turista. Tenemos uh, diferentes puntos con estaciones verticale, verticale, estaciones meteorológicas, sistemas para la gestión del flujo de tráfico, el control de aforo de vehículos en carreteras sin salidas y la gestión inteligente de la emergencia con un puesto de mando avanzado. Todo, todo este concepto lo, y el concepto del proyecto también se está trabajando en, 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 de forma transversa, transversal en el concepto de accesibilidad. Para nosotros es importante la accesibilidad en todos sus canales y evidentemente también en la, la accesibilidad en el canal turístico. ¿no? Por lo tanto, se aplicarían filtros a los contenidos mostrando las actividades y, lugar, y lugares que cumplen los requisitos de accesibilidad al usuario. Enten, entendemos que es una parte muy importante, no solo para lo que es el ciudadano y el residente, sino también para el turista, el turista poder dar una respuesta de accesibilidad y esta respuesta que luego se pueda... Um, reportar la información 
ya desde destino, pero también la información que pueda generar el, turisto, el turista visitando Mallorca, de las discrepancias que puede ver de la información que ha salido. Por tanto, es una parte importante que, que entendemos innecesaria, muy transversal en lo que es el proyecto y que nosotros le, les hemos trasladado en lo que sería la vertical solo de, de turismo aquí. Bueno, y agradecerle su atención y quedamos a su disposición para cualquier pregunta o duda que se pueda realizar. Gracias. Thank you. Um... Well, may I remind you again that you can use the Ask and Vote uh, application to ask any questions, but also, you know, we can actually um, use uh, microphones to, to ask the questions. I just wanted, as a, as a way of uh, wrapping up, I just wanted to thank uh, both of, um, four of the, the four speakers, because I think that um, between them, we have actually identified how important, I mean, if you, you realize, um, all of them are actual representatives of uh, or different parts of Spain. Some of them represent the part of uh, you know, the nation, others represent certain territories. But I think that it's important to highlight how important is uh, tourism for a, for a country, for a territory such as, such as Spain, which represents actually like around 15% of the GDP. Um, according to the World uh, Organization of Tourism, um, by 2027, the impact on GDP worldwide of tourism will be around 12%. So just think that at the moment for Spain, uh, tourism represents 15%, so that's huge. Um, I also wanted to highlight how uh, they've actually made a difference between uh, smart cities and smart destinations, smart territories. They talk about these, these definitions and they've alluded to two different notions, the residents and also the tourists. I think that it's important to address the specific needs of, of the two different stakeholders, which sometimes are actually the same people, but sometimes they are not. So I think that maybe some of the questions can actually be addressed around these topics. And the final observation that I wanted to make, which I think that has been very, very important, is that in all the different presentations, we've actually identified how important is actually gathering data but even more important is how to use data. What's our intelligence model? What are actually the kind of, how is the cognitive map of that information that we are gathering everywhere? What are we doing with it? So I just actually, you know, give you these thoughts to provoke any discussion and um, invite you to ask the speakers that we have here today, okay? Okay, um, I have a question um, from somebody who doesn't want to say who he is or she is. So it says, tourists seem to be a site audience for smart city development. How can tourists be better engaged in driving the development and add value to destinations? I think that that can be asked to all of you. Anyone? Carlos, perhaps, you can start. Uh, yes, uh, well, the, the, the issue of engagement, no? I mean, uh, as, as destinations, we, uh, we are obsessed with the idea of being relevant and, 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 and keeping relevant uh, as, as, as a destination uh, manager, as, as, as a municipality, as a destination manager organization for the visitors while they are visiting and moving around the destination. Uh, and it is, it, is, it is not easy. Um, uh, there are different, different ways to get feedback from the, from the visitors through, uh, through the traditional uh, uh, quality services, uh, uh, surveys. Uh, it is always an opportunity through the uh, tourism uh, uh, offices, uh, which is uh, an important uh, touching point during the experience of the of the tourist within the destination um, and probably afterwards once they 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 leave the destination and, and uh, Mariano uh, mentioned it and, and Jesus also uh, if you are able to to track what they are saying on the on the social uh, networks and, and, and their opinions and their reactions and, and what is the information and the content that they, sh they, they share uh, there there is also another opportunity to, to uh, 
uh, using uh, data mining technologies, uh, gather information that could be useful to redesign services, to understand uh, your weaknesses, uh, and, to, and to keep improving the, uh, your, your processes and, 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 and public services towards the visitors. No? Okay, I agree you. Uh, but my idea, my idea is try to create the concept of tourist intelligence. Uh, this is important. I'll try to start uh, to understand what is the problem. And usually, the city has a lot of uh, re resources, very interesting resources. Then uh, there are not, uh, and the question is how, how often are used this kind of resource. This is very important, a good distribu distribution, and I'll try to, to understand this, con this co concept according to the, in the, the tourist intelligence. It's very important, and the, the business, the, mod the different business model, and the different contact with different, uh, different uh, stakeholders, in especial the tour operators, may be taking account and try to, to, to organize uh, uh, the tourist accord accordingly. Let me uh, to put a different uh, complementary point of view. Most of you are, uh, in fact, tourists. But in real terms, you are citizens for a while, for Barcelona. Uh, that means you have rights, uh, and the city needs to give you services. Uh, and need your opinions. All the services you uh, has the main the same uh, 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 services for citizens and foreigners could work work good. Sí, uh, bueno, totalmente de acuerdo con, con lo que se ha comentado, la importancia de, de los datos, de su interpretación de estos datos y de sacar uh, una ventaja de toda esta información que tenemos. Por tanto, se tendrían que analizar de una forma correcta, de una forma válida y que, esto, y que estos datos de luego nos puedan servir para ir mejorando, mejorando como destino, mejorando como ciudad y también que nos puedan seguir, uh, nos puedan ayudar a a cambiar y a innovar en aquellas cosas que, que pensamos con un proyecto inicial son válidas, pero luego vemos que se tienen que ir modificando. I have another question, which is, um, are smart destinations offering benefits for the locals? Maybe you can just quickly respond, because I have three more questions. So, are uh, smart destinations also offering benefits for the locals? Absolutely, yes, if you think ever in the whole scenario, okay? not, uh, not made only uh, uh, services only for foreigners. Yeah? If you think in, in all the city, you can uh, you have uh, benefit for all the city. Sí, bueno, uh, ya lo hemos estado comentando en la presentación de lo que sería el proyecto de Mallorca. Entendemos que, que la parte, la vertical de turismo es una parte más, pero estamos hablando de que lo integramos en el concepto de, de residentes y turistas, en un concepto global. Entendemos que todos los servicios que se pueden ofrecer, todas las mejoras en ámbito de innovación y todo lo que se puede representar un proyecto smart para un territorio, tiene que ser también beneficioso para los residentes del territorio. Por eso y en este concepto se trabaja conjuntamente y como una parte más uh, fomentar lo que sería o intentar uh, mejorar, uh, ya decimos, intentar mejorar en un concepto de, de isla como Mallorca totalmente, mayoritariamente desviada a, a servicios turísticos, intentar mejorar, pero intentar combinar al mismo tiempo que la plataforma Smart, que todo el concepto Smart de innovación, nos pueda servir para integrar lo que es también el residente en la mejora de la ciudadanía y del día a día y de, de sus quehaceres diarios. Uh, we try to show all the capabilities and the possibilities of tourists in, in each region and according to that try to uh, analyze the, um, the profile of, of, uh, of tourists in the previous moment uh, in especial during, during the, uh, at the moment that uh, he's in the, in the place, in the local, in the, the, the local destination, and of also taking into account what is the uh, feature comment about this. 
but in general, uh, our idea is try to, 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 to understand a global situation, uh, a business model, uh, not a business model only, it's, only, uh, it's a marketing model with uh, taking into account the need and the requirements of the, of the in this case, of the tourist. We are going to have somebody from the floor asking, and then we'll continue with the platform, so please. Uh, hello there. Um, fantastic. It was great to actually find some, uh, to actually find a presentation which talks not only about residents but also about transient populations and tourists. Uh, I'm from the University of Girona, the Faculty of Tourism, and basically what I would like to know is that we've talked a lot about redefining paradigms, economic paradigms, um, when it comes to um, cities in general. However, when it comes to tourism, to tourism, in a country as important as Spain in tourism, how is things like the sharing economy and startups, how are they being integrated on a public level into uh, policy making, et cetera? For example, Airbnb in Barcelona would be a perfect example. Yes. Um, yeah. From, um, uh, we, within, within our concept of smart destination, uh, uh, we also consider the area of the startup ecosystem, how we could help the development of the startup ecosystem around the tourism sector. Uh, and in 2012, we launched a program uh, specifically addressed to support uh, technology-based startups uh, in the tourism sector in Spain. It is the only initiative I know worldwide in which uh, a public administration has invested over 80 million euros in five years in supporting over 250 startups, technology-based startups in tourism in Spain. Uh, so we've been boosting, we've been nurturing, we've been feeding the uh, startup ecosystem uh, in, in Spain very intensively during the last five years. And within those, those, those startups that we have supported, some of them are part of the sharing economy. And a good example, and, and I'm going to finish, uh, to finish it right now, uh, but a good example is a company called uh, Trip for Real. It is a company which was based in Barcelona. Uh, it it uh, was created a, a few years ago, and it participated in our program. In the name of the program is Emprende Tour Program, and we invested from the uh, central administration, and we gave them a, a, a loan under specific characteristics to, uh, to, to launch and to develop their business model, Trip for Real, uh, and, and, and after three years, it was acquired by uh, Airbnb. It was the, f the first time Airbnb was buying a Spanish company and, and, and decided, they decided to, uh, to open a, a, a headquarters here in, 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 in Barcelona for this area of uh, Airbnb trips. No? Uh, so it is uh, maybe a, a good example of uh, how we how we been doing it. I think that we are, wrap, we are our time is up, but I just wanted to ask one, one more question that we have here and it's kind of quite uh, broad. And it's actually asking, how do you involve third parties? How do you actually involve tool, tour operators, for instance, in, in, a, in a smart platform, like the ones that you have described? Can we just maybe go around? In our case, uh, we have two ways. One uh, I have you seen in my presentation is Urban Lab. The other is working with people of uh, tourism in Barcelona, for a specific department. Bueno, um, como hemos explicado, nosotros lo que presentábamos es un, un proyecto, un proyecto de, de futuro que intentaríamos implementar y esperamos pueda haber una respuesta positiva. Pero sí que entendemos que, que tiene que ser con conjuntamente con todas las administraciones y con todo el sector de innovación que pueda ayudar. Y en Mallorca, uh, claro, la parte turística también tendrá mucha importancia. Okay. Bueno, 
eh, repito lo que dije, eh, sorry, eh, according to my previous comment, eh, eh, stakeholders, eh, they are probably the most important part in the, in the, in the smart tourist destination, in the part or uh, organize, organize all the possibilities, is necessary to show, to show a tourist offer in order to improve, improve the possibilities to these uh, stakeholders. Okay, well, thanks a lot for, um, for you being here whilst uh, lunch was actually, you know, supposed to be taking place. And um, please allow me to give them a, a round of applause.